Hi, my name is Sarah Kate Strasfell. I'm from Jamestown High School, and today I'll be talking about my experiment on the effect of orange variety on vitamin C concentration. I'm sure as you know, vitamin C is really important for your body. Usually people get their daily um, recommended value from pills or gummies, but they aren't exactly cheap. An alternative to these supplements are foods containing vitamin C, like oranges. Although the issue is that you don't know how much vitamin C each type of orange contains, so to approach this issue, I decided to do a titration experiment in West, which I tested navel oranges, mandarin oranges, and blood oranges. Typically, navel oranges contain about 140% of your daily recommended value, mandarin containing about 130%, and blood oranges typically contain about 120%. Based off of this information, I hypothesized that if I titrate navel, blood, and mandarin oranges, then the navel oranges will have the highest concentration. Due to titration experiments, um, ability to be applied to various situations, they are a remarkable experimental method and are often used in daily society. Take the healthcare world, for example, like hospitals and medical centers. They will take a diabetic patient's blood sample in order to determine the amount of glucose in their bloodstream, and the results provide information for treatment. Additionally, it can be used at home for simple things like an aquarium. Owners will titrate a water sample to determine what condition their tank is in and what they will need to add more of it for an ideal environment for their fish. For my experimental design, I hypothesized that if one titrates mandarin oranges, navel oranges, and blood oranges, then navel oranges will have the highest concentration of vitamin C. My independent variable was the type of orange and my dependent variable was the vitamin C concentration. Before I start getting into the procedure, I would like to preface by saying that I purchased the Science Buddies Orange Juice Titration Kit. It came with most of the materials, but I did have to purchase more iodine because I did a lot of trials uh, for the sake of consistency and accuracy. Before I even started dealing with the iodine solution, I made sure that I was wearing gloves, goggles, and a lab coat and placed down newspaper for lab safety. And after I was all safetyed up, I poured 30 milliliters of the solution in a 500 milliliter graduated cylinder and added enough water to bring the total volume up to 300 milliliters. Once I had that solution, I put it in the glass bottles and labeled it. So um, it is light sensitive, so it is important to put it in a dark place or in a dark bottle. Then you're gonna um, wanna make sure that you rinse and dry everything. After I rinsed and dried everything, I started to make my starch indicator solution. I started by heating 200 milliliters of distilled water um, on the stove, and I added a fourth teaspoon of soluble starch to the pot. Um, I had to keep stirring it for about 15 minutes because soluble starch isn't even really that soluble, so it did take a while. And once it's fully dissolved, I took it off the heat and allowed it to cool, waiting for it to get um, at room temperature. Uh, while I was waiting, I started to make the vitamin C standard solution by crushing up a 250 milligram tablet into a powder um, into 100 milliliters of distilled water. And once it was all dissolved in the water, I dried my 500 milliliter graduated cylinder and added that solution in it and added even more water to bring up the volume to 250 milliliters. After I had my stand all set up, I began to um, make my first trial. So I measured 20 milliliters of the vitamin C standard solution and put it into the flask. And as soon as it was in the flask, I added 10 drops of the starch indicator solution um, after the starch indicator solution was in there, I put the iodine in the puree. I typically put about, at the mark, 19 to 21 milliliters because that's where I felt like it was enough to titrate it. Um, you're going to um, want to make sure that you let a couple drops drop out first. That way you can measure it correctly. After writing down my initial milliliters, I then began to let the drops drop out. And after each drop dropped, I uh, swirled it so that I could see if the color was going to change. 
uh, the color changed to a blue-black color in the end, and I had to make sure that that color lasted longer than 20 seconds. And when that color changed, I made sure that I recorded when it first changed and not after it had already changed for a while. Once you do the first trial, I repeated it uh, two other times so that I could have three trials, um, making sure that they were all between 0.2 of one another. And after each trial, I did fill up the iodine back up. After you complete the trials for the vitamin C standard solution, I went ahead and moved on to the mandarin juice for testing. Um, I started by juicing the oranges and then filtering it out so that there was no pulp or anything in it and it was pure juice. Um, I needed 20 milliliters of juice per titration so it was imperative that I got 60 milliliters per orange so that I could perform all of my trials. I got three different oranges of each orange at the store and I bought them roughly about the same size and weight so that all my results were consistent. After I continue all my trials for the mandarin orange, I did the same with the blood orange and the navel orange, and I was making sure that I record the initial milliliters and the final milliliters, and then did the difference between them and made sure they are all between 0.2. And the color for the mandarin orange will be a grayish orangish color. It kind of looks gross, <laughs> so just um, I paid attention for a grossish color. And then for the blood orange, it was a little harder to tell because the juice is red, so it just turns like a darker red. After I ran through all of my trials, I ca calculated the amount of vitamin C by using this equation right here and recorded it. As far as risk and safety goes for this experiment, it is really important to read the safety handbook for iodine to know how to properly dispose of it and know what to do if you happen to get it on yourself. You want to wash it with warm water and um, it is a toxic chemical that you want to, as I said earlier, wear goggles and gloves and an apron. Um, to dispose of it, you want to soak it into a paper towel and place that in a tightly sealed bag. Um, it's harmful to the environment and you don't just want to pour it down your drain. Um, and as far as basic safety goes, if you're a girl, put your hair up and don't wear baggy clothing. Um, I'm going to start getting into the results for each of my trials. For this, I did three trials for one um, vitamin C tablet. It, on average, took 21.32 milliliters to titrate it, and it contained 250 milligrams of vitamin C. That was a given. The vitamin C tablet started off as a cloudy white color, and then it turned into a dark blue color once it was titrated. Next are the navel oranges. I did three different oranges that were all about the same size and weight for consistency, and I did three trials for each. On average, it took about 13.43 milliliters of iodine to titrate it, and it contained 157.48 milligrams of vitamin C. As you can see, it was you know a pretty orangey color, and then it turned a more grayish orange color. Again, the color doesn't show up as prominent as in person. For the blood oranges, I did the same as the navel and we'll do the same for the mandarin. So for this one, it took on average 11.68 milliliters of iodine to titrate it, and it ended up containing 136.96 milligrams of vitamin C. You can see that the color was more bright red when it first started, and then when it got titrated, it turned to a darker red. Lastly, where the mandarin oranges uh, did the same thing as I did for the navel and blood oranges with the trials and the number of oranges, they ended up taking 9.32 milliliters of iodine to titrate and they contained 109.29 milligrams of vitamin C. You can see this color was a little bit brighter than the navel orange, more orangey, yellowy, 
and then it turned about the same color as the mandarin oranges as well that grayish orange color unsurprisingly in this experiment one may face challenges uh, for example it is really important to squeeze as much juice as you can from each orange i would recommend hand squeezing it rather than juice squeezing it because you can um, squeeze it even more with your fingers um, mandarin oranges were the absolute hardest to juice out of the three because they're so small and they don't contain as much juice um, so you want to make sure that you can buy the biggest ones that you see so a way to adapt this project would be to expand it further than oranges they're not the only fruit to contain vitamin c and it'd be interesting to learn the true amounts in like kiwis or peaches Information found by performing this experiment can be applied to one's regular diet. With laid out results and facts, one can decide which foods they should incorporate into their diet more frequently to better their vitamin intake. Not everyone will like oranges or like the same type of oranges, so it's helpful to know the vitamin C concentration for multiple things so that people can have multiple options. Getting at my conclusion, I found that the outcome uh, was hypothesized correctly. Um, navel oranges were the highest in vitamin C concentration. Um, results almost prove information given on the internet correct. The only difference was that blood oranges actually contain more than vitamin C, although the percentages were fairly close, so it's just a matter of what oranges you got, where you got them from, the size, and all that. To end off my presentation, here are my citations. There are the websites that I visited to gain the knowledge that I had prior to starting this experiment. Without them, I would not have known as much as I did or been able to grasp the full understanding of this experiment. By conducting this experiment, I have had a newfound interest in titration experiments, and they are honestly so interesting. There's so much that you can do with them, and I would definitely be up to the challenge to do another type. I hope that you too have gained a little bit of interest in titrations experiment by listening to my presentation and found the information uh, interesting. Thank you.